Welcome to this evening podcast. What's going on, everybody? Welcome. It's Tuesday night, and we are getting things off. We have a very special guest in Trevor Sotomayor here, and we have producer Paul in the back, and we are hanging out. But I wanted to come on here and talk to you guys for a few seconds uh, and address something. This isn't going to be anything else other than it, what it is. I don't want to talk about it. It's not going to be a topic, but we just had an assassination attempt on former President Trump's life, and I don't care what side of the aisle you're on or where you lean. Uh, you know, we have all members in the snob nation here. And the fact of the matter is seeing something like that, and it was live on the air and they're showing it on the news, seeing something like that can really affect people in different ways. It can affect people who have never seen anything like that. It can affect people who look up to them, you know, and, and that's important to deal with, you know? So if you guys are, I just want to remind you all, that if you're dealing with something or anything else, it doesn't have to be that, but uh, I know that can be a very scarring thing and our, you know, thoughts and prayers and everything go out um, to him and his family, you know, and the family of the victim who passed away and the ones who were injured, all of you, um, you know, violence is never the answer, but maybe go check out down below in the description. We have resources to help find mental health, uh, you know, advocates and, and things like that and, and just treatments and stuff if you need them. So I wanted to come on here and say that because I do know that it affected me when I saw it. And and that's something I'll talk to my therapist about. And uh, this isn't any type of <laughs> promo or anything. I, you know, I just wanted to say we always keep these down and down below. So if you were affected by it, you're listening or, or watching, maybe go check them out. Maybe reach out to somebody and uh, get the help you need. All right, everybody. Well, let's bring in our awesome uh, guest and my lovely co-host tonight, <laughs> Mr. Producer Paul <laughs> and Trevor Stottlemyre from the Ambassador Radio and Media. Greetings. Thank you guys so much for being on. Thank you for having me. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Uh, guys, I am so excited. We are talking movie monsters tonight. But before we get started, I want to thank, because I didn't do it before, I want to do it now. I want to thank our sponsor of this video, StubHub. Thank you guys so much. If you want to get out and get tickets for concert venues, uh, to concert venues, um, sporting events, everything else, head on down to the link in StubHub, their affiliate sponsor, and we truly appreciate them. Appreciate you guys for supporting the channel as well. So, guys, uh, before we get started, let's uh, let's recap a little bit. Um, first, I want to talk to you, Trevor. Tell yes. us more about Ambassador Media. Well, yet again, I have to thank you, Paul, everyone at the Stob Nations for having me again. Uh, Ambassador Radio is a radio show um, and also growing into a media, multimedia concept that looks at the B-side of music history. And when I say that, I'm not talking like, you know, things that are under the radar. I'm talking under, under the radar. Yeah, you've taught uh, me something about genres that, and musical genres yeah, I never it, thought it, it touches upon almost every genre. And its goal for me is to learn as much about music as the show does. So every episode is a personal deep dive into music that is curated to be, you know, take a trip on the B-side and see uh, what has been neglected and been neglected for some very nefarious reasons. So I love it. And you do. And and indie is so important and not mm -hmm. just indie, but like uh, songs that have fallen by the wayside and, and, and artists and things like that have that nobody knows about or has ever heard about you bring to light. And, you know, that's a great thing. Appreciate that. Well, thank you. It's, it's, it hasn't brought anything monetary to me, but it's been, <laughs> um, well, pretty much a life's project yeah. for, well, since I was in college. So I love it. And, and yes, I know exactly how you feel, <laughs> but you can by uh, following us over on Patreon <laughs> and supporting us. If you'd like, it all goes back to the channel, but I do want to say, guys, uh, I'm excited about tonight's topics. Mm -hmm. Paul, I know yes. you are because we're going to get into some horror tonight, and that's your jam. Yes. But I want to, I want to ask you because I love you so much, and you look, you look so lovely tonight. How's your week going, buddy? It's it's been an interesting week. Uh, worked 22 hours yesterday, so I was catching up on some sleep today. So it's it was nothing wrong good, with that. Good Monday, you know. <laughs> good thoughts. 
sorry you had to work 22 hours so i uh i hope that it was worth it uh to monetarily speaking somebody you has can to hope <laughs> <laughs> so somebody has to get has to do it, uh with their projects but uh thank you guys again for joining in today but i yeah i thought it'd be fun now and, and to kind of explain where this came from uh i was thinking about the dark universe they were going to put out universe was going to universal was going to mm-hmm. try and do uh, and it started with the tom cruise ironically we were just talking about him mm-hmm. but the tom cruise uh mummy movie which was not i may have to do that for it does it suck because when i saw it in theaters i was like this doesn't seem as bad as everybody's saying and then i started thinking about it <laughs> <laughs> and uh <laughs> but i mean like nothing i I went into that movie knowing that nothing's ever going to compare to the, the Brendan Fraser mummy. That's the pinnacle in my opinion. I was like, unless you have like something like that, it's not going to hold up, but I'll see where this dark universe goes. And I think I was just so anxious for a dark universe as they were explaining it, that I wanted to believe that it was good. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> and now like 10 years later, uh, I can officially say that it's never coming. So let's recast, gentlemen. <laughs> that sounds like a plan. Let's but I start must this say, Benicio right del Toro did play a good werewolf. He did. That was a good version. That I really did like. That was the high point of the most contemporary dark universe, which they keep trying again and again and again. I didn't mind Luke Evans as Dracula. I didn't love the movie, but I didn't mind him in the role. I would have liked to have seen the continuation of it, if that makes sense. I, I, Paul, please jump in. <laughs> I you just, love- I, I don't even know, like that Dracula. I just kind of thought it was to be honest like i still like the original one a lot better um i mean even though it kind of drifts away from universal like i love nostrum like that's probably still my favorite vampire film it's just the makeup and everything like that the musical scores i love as a good mm-hmm. silent film so this one you know i expected it to be the dark into mac shrek yeah yeah well you should uh uh are you excited for the one that's coming out in december i'm looking forward to it um it's tough with horror you know the horror community you get so hyped for movies and half the time if not more it's just a let which kind of sucks at a certain point so you just kind of try to keep your hopes kind of low or at bay just so that you don't get too disappointed when it comes out but we'll, <laughs> more on that later <laughs> <laughs> yes <laughs> so trevor yes. um you know you are you're an aficionado and 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 uh, especially classic films all film really well, uh you. but classic films like and i think when i say i put the emphasis on classic films because most of our wonderful conversations ra- are wrapped around classic films so I, I i do definitely like when i think of these things i go to you for that and i think if anybody's gonna have a great list and i did not look at yours still you sent it to me and i did not look at it <laughs> i was like uh, i was like i do not you want said you were going to I did. <laughs> and i also I, I i pulled up three castings on uh chat gpt one with a-list actors one with b-list actors and one Mm. with predominantly horror actors i have not looked at it yet i just typed it in and let it go i didn't want to see anything while it was influenced i didn't want anything to influence mine so it's going to be interesting so it's going to be all of our castings now i went at this from a point of it's all an in world they're all whether it's all you know different movies this is going to be the monsters universe this new dark universe and who would i want to play um now with that being said i will kick us off and let's all start let's go down the line uh, i'll call it out we'll go with dracula all right and then afterwards why don't we go through the jet chat gpt and see what they said okay so dracula i went with nick cage because i loved his dracula in renfield <laughs> and it's mm-hmm. stu- so new and still fresh i thought if by my picks i think that would be really cool to like put them all together um so that's what i was kind of going with not fully co- full comedy but maybe a little more comedy to it all right paul what, what's your uh who's your dracula i i didn't write his first name but the scars guard brother that was in oh uh, yeah kill boy and um uh, pennywise okay that brother. all right um uh bill scars thank you yes As i was immediately I thinking alexander scars and i'm like tarzan no. i was like i guess i could work <laughs> no. <laughs> no, no, no. i think no. he'd play it well i think he'd be I creepy too look charming you, you know now did you make your picks based on all this being uh like an in-universe where they're all um, together yeah 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 okay cool 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 and i kind of i, I, I left so the like, parameters mm-hmm. i want so, the parameters to stay open yeah mm-hmm. so uh, mine are all gonna be dark like i have 
dark depictions of what Skarsgård would do for Dracula as opposed to the seriously it's good so. I need you to go to the descriptions <laughs> and scroll down to the bottom where it says mental health resources <laughs> and start looking you just start looking it's getting dark wasn't it a Skarsgård that was in true blood yeah uh, it was yeah, um, this- I think that was Alexander yes yeah, there's a history of vampires in that family <laughs> oh my god <laughs> That's true, and technically Pennywise is like a energy vampire. Ugh. Yeah, <laughs> or fear. I right, have to jump in really, really quick. When you mentioned Nosferatu, who is one of the most important of the original monsters, I have one word, and it's either a good or a bad thing, and that's Eggers. Mm-hmm. He could make a masterpiece. So I just had to. I'm so sorry. No, no, sorry. <laughs> he did. That. Hopefully, he yeah. did very yeah. soon. <laughs> we'll find out in December. Uh he's got a very good track record for me. Mm-hmm. So I'm excited. Uh now Trevor, who would play your Dracula? Well, first I have to say exactly how I kind of did the list. Uh mm-hmm. like Paul, I tried to think of them all together. Uh so I want also people who would represent the year 2024. But I also reached out to a couple friends and also uh, posted in a private group I have for Ambassador Radio Media. And people gave me some really awesome suggestions, which helped my mind, which is stuck in Lugosi, uh, Peter Cushing, and all those legendary, but Paul Nasi helped me along. So for me, and this comes down to two things. He is so wonderfully global, and also he has such piercing eyes, and he is so pretty with a nastiness, and that's Dev Patel as Dracula. Ooh, come! can you explain why? I would love to hear your version. Okay, well, I feel that right now, I mean, even if you've seen him many things, just in Monkey Man alone, there is this... Dracula needs, if you're going to look for the Lugosi uh, recipe, the, the person needs to be intense, very attractive, depending on whatever age they are, and also give off a generalized air of mystery. And I think Dev Patel can do that wonderfully. I also think he can give a low-key and high-key performance at the same time. So, as I said, I got some help with this too, but I had to agree with this one. I don't hate it. I like it. And he's young, I think. Yeah, I mean, he play dark. What do you think about that, Paul? I think it'd be great. I'd be. I'd watch that one. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. It'd be interesting. <laughs> it'd be interesting to almost move, and I know people are gonna go crazy when I say this, but move the Dracula lore to maybe India. Oh That'd yeah. be fun. Yeah. I mean, God forbid we get experimental with something and make a movie that might be interesting and and different, but. Well, uh, our- <laughs> yeah, our concept of Dracula is still stuck in the Bram Stoker book and also short stories like Carmilla. So that's our idea of vampires. But one could go on for hours just about the vampiric lore of every place in the world. So it yeah. doesn't have to be in Transylvania. Very in fact, fair. it shouldn't be, actually. I don't doubt that, but you know how fans get. <laughs> they get mad about it. Uh, and it happens. But uh, all right. So as we're going on, let's go to Frankenstein's monster next. And I went, I wanted to take somebody who was beautiful, right? And make <laughs> them the monster. And then maybe add uh, like a bit of vanity to Frankenstein. Not just the loneliness and like I look like this, but like I'm not who I once was, you know, sort of add that element to it. Um, and I thought Idris Elba could play a good mm. Frankenstein's monster. That name. Mm. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'll explain that further uh, later. <laughs> oh, I love it. So, Paul. Who would yeah. be your Frankenstein? Okay, so I chose for, for the doctor, right? So I had to choose the doctor and the monster because that's just who I am. Oh, I didn't choose the doctor. Yeah. Oh, that's a good one. So so the doctor I want with Jeremy White because he reminds me of a Gene Wilder enough, and that's mm-hmm. I love young Frankenstein. I think his acting ability, he could play a really okay. gripping doctor. And then as for um, yeah. actual Frankenstein, I want the opposite way. I wanted a big, scary guy that I think is a good actor as well, and that's Bartista. You know what? I love that. Um, and I'm going to throw, like now that I'm thinking about it, I'm going to throw my Victor Frankenstein out. Nicholas Holt from the menu. Ooh, I think he could play a, good a really one. good role. And he's in Nosferatu, mm-hmm. which might be an exciting, like, you know, see how he is gothic. But, uh, that, you know, that's off the top of my head, though. I did not plan that one. 
Trevor, how about you? Who's your monster? Or what'd you think? Of, and also, what'd you think of Paul's? Oh, I thought they were great. Uh, although I'm kicking myself that I didn't think about casting both Dr. Frankenstein, the monster, now. But um, yeah, for me, Frankenstein, I think Michael Shannon. And this is also based on multiple things. Mm-hmm. But he is a bit older. He has a very chiseled quality that's hard to tell his age. He's yeah. stoic and he can look rough so he has that rugged beauty and in my opinion the frankenstein monster must always have an element of ugliness as we as humans think is ugly so yeah yeah and i I like that i like this i like that choice a lot that's a good one and jeremy allen white's really good one for victor frankenstein oh yeah i I, you know as soon as you said i was like that'd be a cool one to see Especially yeah. in yours with Batista. <laughs> so I thought those are some great choices. All right. Next, oddly enough, next up is The Mummy. Yes. And I went with Oscar Isaac. Hmm. Okay. I don't know. Like, I was, I, I didn't go with uh, uh, an Egyptian actor um, because, in my opinion, it was more up to date. And he, I would like him to be the mummy possessed, like an American possessed oh, in a okay. different land. I think it'd be kind of a cool, maybe sort of a, a, a um, an allegory to like, I don't want to say citizenship, but like maybe a uh, border, you know, um, you know, like an American who is now stuck as this mummy who's trying to get around but like you know can still do the human part like he did in the original but you know okay. and, and something like that like i see a parallel there that could really i think would work okay yeah. <laughs> tell me yeah. if i'm wrong but i just for some no, reason i, I like it guys <laughs> kind of pull that off but uh what what do you think paul who's your mummy so first i want to say that the the mummy with a brendan fraser is still my favorite um that's oh, yeah. just it's so good so it, it was hard trying to come up with the mummy and be like, all right, if I had recast it, who would I do? I went with Justin Long. I think I'd love to see his interpretation of playing the guy, you know, traveling over and, you know, he's used to bad shit always happening to him character wise. Anyways. God, you have such a hard on for Justin Long. I love Justin Long, man. He's you just, love Justin Long. you love he's him. Just a, and he's lovable in horror, man. <laughs> I think, I think if you went the more comedic route, not comedic, but you could do a similar thing mm-hmm. with Justin Long as the mummy mm-hmm. for sure. Like kind of like a haphazard became the mummy mm-hmm. is sort of what I'm thinking. Kind um, of like, the mummy meets idle hands was how I kind of envisioned in my head with just long. And could you imagine that? Could you imagine you're the mummy and like, you're trying to come to either one and like you're stuck in Egypt and you right. don't, <laughs> under, you don't know the language, you know, and like you're dealing with these things and like mine could probably be a little more dark and twisted. Whereas yours could be probably be like just long as not, I mean, Tusk was dark and twisted, but there were, mm. he was the comedic effect of it. Yeah. Like, right. so, yeah. He's got a lane. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And uh, but he he has got a good lane and he's good at it. But I like those choices. And now, Trevor, I want to hear yours. I'm going to switch this up a bit. And uh, my mummy would actually be Zoe Kravitz. Ooh, for several reasons. Yet again, she is a human being that is completely trans global and has a look that literally could be anything or anyone. She has Mm -hmm. piercing eyes, which are important in anything that is connected to a character played by Boris Karloff. It also gives the mummy the ability to dig itself into pharaohs and things of that nature that were more female-centric. And it makes sense. And I like there being at least one massive change in the universe. You know, I like that. And I'm going to change mine to a woman as well. And I'm going to piggyback off of yours. <laughs> I'm going to say, I'm going to say oh, Zendaya. Damn. <laughs> That's what I was Thank thinking you. when he was talking about that. I, uh-huh. like, I got to it first. <laughs> you should have <laughs> spoke up beforehand. <laughs> uh, no, I like, I like Zoe Kravitz though. She has a lot of, like, she brings uh something to each role like i really liked mm-hmm. her and kimmy um like she played a really she plays really good um <sighs> trying to think of the word that like trying to sound smart is what i'm trying to do but i should just say like <laughs> she plays really good like mousy types mm-hmm. you know she does a really good job with that which is like, amazing when you see her in public it she's just striking like, oh yeah i mean i've good. never seen her in person yeah. but like she is I mean, a beautiful as far woman. as her pictures as far as you know public appearances mm-hmm. 
it, oh, it's amazing. Yeah. She was yeah. she was really good in oh it's funny I say mousy and then I think of the Batman. She was great in that too, and she was very mm-hmm. powerful in that. <laughs> um so she, she can do it all, I guess. But <laughs> I like Zoe Kravitz too. Uh she's a beautiful woman, and of course, and uh like you said, striking, which I think would work well. And that's why I said Zendaya when I went with it, uh mm-hmm. one of the female is it, it just makes sense. it is there's there's like a look, there's an exotic look um that and they're they hold a presence like mm-hmm. zendaya and dune and dune too oh, beautiful commanded performance mm-hmm. in that uh commanding performance in that that was just wonderful uh dan is joining in and dan's here and he's given his read off uh and before we get to our our next let's see where he's at we have dracula he says christian bale no nah, dan i think you're wrong no i'm just kidding that's a cool <laughs> <Damn>. uh, <laughs> i give dan crap all the time i was like that's uh, good one. mummy that's benicio good. del toro that'd be interesting um even javier bardem as well yeah. An interesting one wolfman out he's a little too old in but like in his like in maverick like 95 right. maverick. <laughs> I, I feel like that would be like perfect alfa molina wolfman <laughs> mode but uh i don't hate it i mean i love alfa molina I'm I'm that one. Also good. <laughs> the frank's frankenstein is tom hardy i think what he did with his face in bane that'd be a cool one uh all right let's get to our next one which is going to be the invisible man and i chose of all people <laughs> Somebody who I think you could, I was going to make a joke and say John Cena, but I'm not. Um, I'm not. I hate true. you, you piece of shit. John Cena. <laughs> <laughs> we only wish. Oh, my God. It'd be perfect <laughs> casting. You don't even have to apply any, like, cloaks or anything. Visibility cloaks. Um <laughs> No, I chose somebody who's so good looking that you don't want to see his face and he's going, but he has a great personality to, and charm to bring to just a voice. And that is Ryan Gosling. Oh, thank God. Okay. Could you imagine Ryan Gosling as the, as like just a scientist working in a lab and he accidentally, I wasn't even going to let him create it <laughs> in the lab and like, he just takes the pill. Or whatever it is, and it turns him invisible. That would be charming, especially if he's running around with the rest of these monsters, being a pain in the ass. Um, that's my choice. But who is your invisible man, sir? So I went also with a good-looking gentleman uh, that's very charming as well. And I thought you were going to say his name, but I went with uh, Brad Pitt. He already played an invisible man in uh, Deadpool Two. Doesn't count. <laughs> <laughs> is okay. that why you chose him? <laughs> I actually <laughs> forgot about that till you just said it, but. <laughs> I love it. I love it. No, 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 no. It's all good. All good. No, great choice. Brad Pitt would work. He's, he still has that same sort of charm and wit that he can bring to it. I like it. Uh, and Trevor, how about you, sir? Who would you be yours? Well, first of all, I want to say your choice is amazing, and I wish I would have thought of that. Uh, <laughs> if for no other reason, if you, you, you see Gosling and what he's popular for versus only God forgives, you understand how he potentially could do the dynamic acting of a Claude Rains, who was the Invisible Man. But that brings me to the logic of this one, and I'm on boat with you, Meg. Uh, I think the perfect person right now who could be as over-the-top as Claude Rains is Nick Cage. Nice. Ooh. Oh. I got, uh, I'm going I'm to throw something at you. Okay. <laughs> There's something at you. I think if you don't use your choice in Nicolas Cage another good one could be Jamie Foxx oh yeah those two really lay into the roles more than I think anybody I ever see and man that like I I think you I think you could take the roles and interchange a lot of their roles Mm -hmm. and they would both give not similar performances at all Mm -hmm. but the intense performances that they both bring every time and that's why I was Mm -hmm. just throwing out Jamie Foxx on top of that but um I like it I do if he wasn't my Dracula i could see it <laughs> um <laughs> uh dan is all about only god forgives he says it's so such a great movie love yeah. that movie. Uh, I love our, everything ren does we talked about the invisible man we're on the bride of frankenstein i went with emily blunt she's like my favorite Ooh, right now. good she, you know I, she just can bring a lot to the role mm-hmm. and especially her playing off idris elba and if we got them all together like some awesome avengers type of uh group boom this would be perfect in fact let me and i'll tell you afterwards my idea for to get all these monsters together again in a new movie. <laughs> but uh, that would be a franchise so anyway now paul 
what is who is your bride of Frankenstein? So my bride of Frankenstein was going with you know Bartista and Jeremy White, you know, going with that, mm. and eventually they're going to be together. I went a little older with her, and I went with a uh, Tony Collette. Hmm. Interesting, because I love her in considering... and she she just she has those she talks with her eyes. She has great facial mm. expressions, a good scream, and I I just think she would bring justice to the bride of Frankenstein. No, I I don't hate that. Don't hate it at all. Dan says the Invisible Man his would be rough would be rebecca ferguson just thought about that but anyway trevor how about you who's your uh my bride? bride of frankenstein uh would actually be millie bobby brown and let me explain why wow both of you okay, so if, if in if in this world <laughs> michael shannon is the frankenstein monster uh and as i said the frankenstein monster has to embody ugliness of some kind but millie has already proven to us she has classical hollywood beauty but also has the ability of androgyny so of course no matter how beautiful the bride is just like the monster it's bits and pieces but in this case it's bits and pieces in the purest mixture of arts to be classical beauty and that it most brings michael shannon to his knees so <laughs> interesting it'd be an odd pairing but i mean it's an odd story yeah so i mean like I, i'm i'm not putting it down i'm just i'm thinking about it in my head um a lot of things in my head are odd so no, same listen, listen. <laughs> we need that you know uh i like the odd. dad dan did not understand the 2024 part of the assignment <laughs> <laughs> i do love it though no these are great choices though like all throughout time you know those are some really good choices for the roles sam dunn says bride of frankenstein helena bottom carter at one Ooh. point i would agree at one point i would agree like maybe 20 yeah, years ago i would have been like perfect they should have made one with her you know in fact yeah I'm annoyed that nobody has made a Bride of Frankenstein movie, mm-hmm. not a continuation off of Frankenstein. Right. Just a, Frankenstein already exists. Right. Mm-hmm. And we already know the story. So tell the story of Bride of Frankenstein, her getting pulled in. They keep yep. the original screaming. is the best universal horror film. I don't yeah. think anybody wants to touch it. Ooh. Well, I mean, you don't have to. I mean, people have remade it, though. Mm-hmm. I mean, oh wait, you think the Bride of Frankenstein is the best? Well, the, the in a very like to continue a monster universal universe. Of course, the agreement. Bride has been in more parodies and things of that nature. Yeah. But to do a solid remake of the Bride of Frankenstein, I it swear. is the most inventive of all the Universal monster films. I I I agree and disagree in a weird way mm-hmm. only because like, <laughs> i think that a bride of frankenstein remake would suffer from a frankenstein i don't know remake that it's connected to mm-hmm. i think if you're gonna tell the bride of frankenstein tell it as is you can remake it as is and in fact mm-hmm. i would love to see robert eggers do this in the style of like a lighthouse error mm-hmm. type movie that'd be good yeah or you could bring it up in time period and just have it be the son of Dr. Frankenstein, which is, I know, cliched, but if you need a quick way of separating the two. Listen, boom. this isn't the 80s or early 2000s. <laughs> 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 Uh, i don't dislike it but i like I would, that i would really like to see a bride of frankenstein movie that frankenstein is barely in mm-hmm. you know i think it would be really interesting like like maybe in the beginning mm. get your first act out and then mm. you know bring it in but yeah that'd be an interesting one we, we stayed on her, we stayed on her a lot longer than i thought we would but i love well, it real quick I'm, I'm sorry but the original text of frankenstein is very much about the psychology of the monster and that's something that hasn't been played with completely uh frankenstein unbound i think and there was another one played more with the idea but there's a lot there that can be mined and it's just in the book um well let's move on to our wolfman and i'm you know after seeing (laughs) a lot of his performances i think jake gyllenhaal would Ooh, make a good. really good intense wolfman um yeah I, I that's why I went, and i think it would match well with like the universe i'm building which i'll explain afterwards hey <laughs> there you go <laughs> so uh how about you paul what uh what do you got oh without doubt taylor lautner no i'm just kidding um i went with ethan hawk <laughs> oh, nice. oh wow good choice 
Yeah. That'd be interesting. He could play he could play guilt ridden Wolfman well. Yes. Mm-hmm. Uh I like that. And honestly, like I'm basing this off of like Nick Cage's Renfield, like I said, so mm-hmm. it's all up to date. He's in the now. Maybe while along the way, mm-hmm. you know, you can have others that were created, but it takes place in the now. And I'll explain that in a little while. <laughs> I'm just gonna keep saying that until everybody's like, <laughs> uh, Jason's here from the Three Geeks. What's up? How you doing? And Dan says, I maintain Alfred Molina. Size looks like Lon Chaney Jr. Mm-hmm. Even has the down on his luck look. Great and th- uh, did great in Spidey. Can't argue. He's a great actor. Uh, all right. Well, Trevor, how about you, sir? What's your uh, choice for the Wolfman? Well, I have to go with my boy crush, and that is. He's not as good as a cat familiar, but he would make a great wolf man. And that's Mr. Idris Elba, Luther himself. Ooh, all right. I like it. I, I like, like it. it. I do too. You can play it well. Just CGI it better than cats. That's it. <laughs> very fair. Very fair. Yeah. Because um, that was not out appealing at all. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Uh, all right. Now we're going to go. We got two more left, and I'm going to go with the creature of the Black Lagoon on the next one. Okay. Which for me, you're not going to see the creature. You're not going to see the actor under the creature. And I feel like that's something that's important. Like you're not going to get a lot of A list actors who are like, no, I don't want to be in a costume, you know, the whole time. But I thought if you really played it well and you really pushed it, you can get him to do it. But I think he would be, he would hold well to the universe that I'm building mm-hmm. and could probably have some fun with it. All right. I thought it'd be Channing Tatum. <laughs> oh, okay. I thought, you know, he's he's in great shape, you know. He can he can play funny and like this you you could try to remake but why try to remake Creature from the Black Lagoon and the beauty behind it? Especially when I said for years, you can't remake that. You can sequelize it the hell out of it and make it and make it campy, but you can't remake that. It's too beautiful. And then, of course, they made uh, The Shape of Water, and I was proven wrong. And then they remade it into this beautiful way. It has to be different, of course. So I thought, with going with that, this would be more of the Gill Man you see in a certain 80s movie I'm not going to talk about at the moment. Mm-hmm. But I would want the classic look, mm-hmm. personally. Uh, I do like Chad Man's choice here. He says, evening, what's going on? Go check them out tonight. They'll be live tonight on the Video Store Clerks podcast. Uh, awesome guys, and I loved I love watching their show. Uh, and Chad Man also says the creature David Howard Thornton would be really good. The That's only right. reason I'm going with like not saying David Howard Thornton is <laughs> you know deserve, like, but to me he's on a Doug Jones level where it's like <clears throat> they they're making their bones off of playing intense, wonderful characters. And for this, I would want more of an A list style of of uh, confidence that in the character that's why i would go with maybe more of a, a known celebrity um but david howard thornton in a serious like remake would i think you could make a well if you're going to remake that with david allen thornton you got to make the second <laughs> creature <laughs> revenge of the creature of the black Lagoon. Uh, uh i think that would work better but I, i'm going off on tangents here um <laughs> i would love to hear so what do you think paul who would be your uh creature from black so Lagoon? he's a newer actor to me um, but I went with uh, Moses Sumney, and he's from mm-hmm. Maxine. He was a video store clerk mm-hmm. in that one, and I just think he's got the build for it. I'd love to see him act more, and so I, I'd love to see him, you know, step up to the challenge of doing this. So I think he'd you, be great. You, with the mask off, you know who the uh, guy who plays the creature in the original reminds me of? Dan's brother Tim. <laughs> <laughs> she kind of looks like him. <laughs> That's funny. A bit. Reminds me of him. So I just wanted to say that while Dan's watching. Maybe Tim will listen later. But. Uh, <laughs> Trevor, who would play your Gil Man? Um, I had to go with the long-term horror, uh, you know, spank bank choice, and that would be Kane Hoder. Because <laughs> oh, you're going hardcore. It hard would just be it. awesome because Kane is Kane. Uh, I think also in my concept, where a lot of it is connected with the ideas of ugliness and beauty, this creature of the Black Lagoon would live in the kind of same sphere that man thing would in the um, Marvel universe. So -hmm. he'd be a much darker, potentially even supernatural creature. I like that a lot. I like that a lot. Oh, cool. Let's write it. (laughs) I dig that. And uh, I did, I do like Dan's choice of uh, Cumberbatch in a mocap. 
um he could pull it off of course but again like gilman's not going to talk much yeah and not saying that he can't act with his you know body but i don't know i just feel like i get more of an act from yeah more of like a maybe dracula or something you know Mm -hmm. something like that would cumberbatch uh tim met him or maybe the guy who designed the suit or something connected to it also happens to be his favorite i think (laughs) that's awesome (laughs) well i mean that works uh all right (laughs) our last one we'll go around the horn real quick uh is the phantom of the opera couldn't leave it out and i went with gary oldman Ooh, older i think mm-hmm. i mean listen the guy's got the gravitas to pull it off let's be real mm-hmm. i just feel like if you up if you updated that story to something today maybe set it at the sydney opera house in australia mm-hmm. make them australian you could have like a margot robbie playing the lead role of the of the of the women's role in it uh i can't think of her name um ah, that could be a good one <laughs> i'm just putting stuff in my head now i'm just like eh, eh, eh. we'll see in like three years but whatever <laughs> <laughs> all right i went off on a tangent so what do you think uh paul who's your phantom of the opera i went with patrick wilson I like Patrick Wilson. I like him a lot. I, think it did just, I don't think that movie would be amazing, but I think, you know, Phantom and Opera, I wouldn't say is my absolute favorite out of all the universe. So I'm kind of like, mm-hmm. I think it, it still hold the weight. I think he does a good job and he's big in the horror community. So, mm-hmm. oh yeah. Like it, like it. All right, Trevor, what about you, sir? I'm going to have to go with uh, Mr. Cumberbatch because I really didn't think too much mm-hmm. about it, but I really like the choices a lot. Yeah. The, the like only it. thing I can say is with Gary Oldman, if the direction of that film, say say if the 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 monster universe uh, is extremely dark, then Oldman will be great. But yet again, like many of these these stories, uh, there's a lot of the you know beauty and ugly, ugly and there's always this dichotomy. So I think Oldman could only really play more of like, you know, a Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde or a hunchback where, you know, yeah, somebody who is not super classically beautiful, but at least at one point looks quite appealing. And there always has to be that. No, nah, I, I, I think all of them be great. No, I'm just kidding. I, that's I, mean, I, 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 I read these movies. So connecting all of this and to kind of give you guys the rundown of like what my idea to bring all these characters together, he would still work. It would be a darker movie than the other. It'd probably be more grandiose mm-hmm. in my opinion. Like if I were making all these and I was running this, that would be the big one. He would make an appearance in like the he he would be like the Mickey Rourke in the Expendables of Universal Monsters that I'm building. He's like maybe the guy they check in with. You get a really good acting scene out of, and then you move on. You know, <laughs> it's just action from that point on. But uh, like he, that would be that, and that would Botox. be it. Would be kind of a uh, you know. I mean, you can go younger. You can do a Hugh Jackman. You know, mm-hmm. uh, he's he's Australian. He works. Whatever. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but for for me i would i always wanted them to meet because they have to take out the monster squad oh. and that would be the re- that would how you, be how you do the universal franchise but it's more up to date yes there's like teenage kids involved but like the older monster squad still exists and like they're still like exist in the world you know what i mean like and and so like when you get to them it's a little more darker it's a little more disgruntled yeah it seemed like it was happy in that first one but it's been years of fighting monsters you know and now they're kids now they're older and they thought they were done and now the kid now they're all back i think that would be fun kind of like it no it sucked (laughs) no 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 the Um, material is basically that well you wouldn't do it wouldn't be just kids though you would Mm -hmm. you would be building a team mm-hmm. and like the monster squad would be well, the, 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 I, i've explained it better the, i'm not explaining it better <laughs> i've done it on this show before and i've explained it <laughs> they were a team i'll leave it what do you i'll mean? leave it for you guys to go check out that episode <laughs> <laughs> um we're actually not doing the monsters movie we're not doing the monster music the mixtape for that will be in two weeks so or the, the horror movie but i like it um so save it for then james this is movie monster talk and we just gave all of our uh movie monsters that we hold true to and and dear in the universal world but i'm going to run down real quick all right here's the a-list actors they have dracula benedict cumberbatch frankenstein's monster tom hardy oh wow uh dan (laughs) uh the mummy oscar isaac Mm -hmm. hey Uh, although i changed it 
Um, <laughs> Invisible Man, Cillian Murphy. That's a good one. Mm. I like that. Ah. The Bride of Frankenstein, Charlize Theron. She could pull it off. Mm. Um, the Wolf Man, Hugh Jackman. I just don't see that. Uh, the Phantom of the Opera, Joaquin Phoenix. Mm-hmm. Huh. That'd be a that's good a one. Good, good one. That's a really good choice. That's a, yeah. this better than my choice. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> the Creature from the Black Lagoon, Jason Momoa. I thought about that. <laughs> That's interesting. That's um, you know, Aaron Taylor Johnson, he, we sleep on him, but he's a good actor too. He might be good mm-hmm. in the creature from the black Lagoon as well. Uh, B list actors, Dracula, Luke Evans, you and you and like three other people in the movie that day. Uh, Frankenstein's <laughs> monster, David Harbor, Hopper from Stranger Things. I like it. Mm-hmm. The mummy, Naveen Andrews, who is on Lost. Um, uh, he was in tons of other shit too. Uh, the invisible man, Dan Stevens. I like that role. I like that. He's he's a good actor. Uh, the Bride of Frankenstein, Elizabeth Debicki, who we just saw in Maxine. She plays the director. Uh, it's a good choice. Oh, <laughs> the Wolfman, Carl Urban. Ooh, that's a great choice. I'm, I, I didn't even good. think about him. Oh, this I is a good, the Phantom in the Opera, Adam Driver. I don't. Mm-hmm. I think Joaquin would fit more in my version, but I think Adam Driver would be a good choice. Yeah, uh, not a bad choice. Uh, that's for sure. <laughs> a creature from the Black Lagoon, Joe Mangliano. Or mangly yellow or whatever. Um, he's so big. He's like a really big dude. Um, not saying that the creature can't be, but like Jason Momoa and and Joe Joe guy, uh, Joey Mangs, as I'm gonna call him, they seem too big. But that's just me. Oh my god! Predominantly horror actors: Dracula, Bill Skarsgård, Ooh, Frankenstein's monster, Doug Jones, uh, the Mummy, Tony Todd. I don't know if that Ooh. works. Oh. I'd be interested to see it. Um, the Invisible Man, Patrick Wilson. The Bride yeah. of Frankenstein, Ailer, Anya Taylor-Joy. Ooh. That's hard. Really She's good. Hard. She's a good actor. She was the best part about... Well, Chris Chris Hemsworth was good, too. But uh, Furiosa, they didn't give her much to work with. Uh, the Wolfman, Ethan Hawke. There you go, dude. Uh, <laughs> I think you're two for two on this list. <laughs> and you, Patrick Wilson's on there too, but The Phantom of the Opera, Robert England. Go watch it. <laughs> uh, and The Creature from the Black Lagoon, Kane Hodder. Very awesome. Very awesome. All right, guys, we're going to get into... Uh, well, actually, let's see what everybody's saying real quick. Chad Man says The Expendables of the Monsterverse. There you go. Uh, and I like Naveen Andrews. Good pick. Um, I didn't pick him, did I? I didn't pick him. No, that was uh, that was all uh, Chat GPT it supplied us with that, and we were interested in it. But now it's time to talk about our five takeaways. That's right, everybody. Let's get into it, and we are going to talk about our five movie monsters we love. And let's get started because I'm excited. I'm going to go down the line uh, again. When I just started to kick us off in number five, if that works for you guys. Uh, my number five for this is the Graboids from Tremors. Uh, I love Tremors and I love the Graboids and I think I in in the truest form I love it. that's why I love number four as well but uh that is my that is my number five what's your number five Paul so I I know it's kind of hard to quite anyway mine was the thing I went with the thing as number five okay. I know it changes form but I love that you have to like <laughs> reevaluate in the middle of saying it like it's a perfectly obvious, like if you had come out and been like oh, pippy longstocking would have been like all right you're done like, <laughs> i don't know enough about movies kid get out of here <laughs> but that's a perfectly reasonable thing to say <laughs> um de- define monster movie monsters if they're monsters in movies if they could be human they could be monsters but they have to be monsters they have to classify as you know scary monstrosities monstrosities yeah perfect mm. um uh, maybe been uh, already been made and left oh yeah you should check out the phantom of the Opera. all right what's your number five trevor oh well i didn't put them in order but uh, i'll go with the one that you know is part of my childhood and i know yours and that's god's <clears throat> Hill. very nice very nice he is the king of the monsters for very good reasons and you know he is culturally relative enough that you know probably seven out of ten people if they're asked monster they're gonna think of godzilla especially since the monster verse as Wirt just talked about it hasn't been in the media for a while yeah 
Oh, that's a great point. Uh, I love that. Um, all right. My number four for the list today is going to be the doppelgangers from us. Ooh. They Ooh. freaked me the hell out, man. Like, I, granted, I, I know there are other humans, stuff like that, but it's like they know what you're thinking. They, you know, and it's like it was just pretty intense, and I really did enjoy that element. And, and the fact that they look like you and the psychological effects of, like, like, what if he has to kill, like, the one that looks like his daughter, you know, in the movie, you know, or, like, she died. Like, how do you do that? <laughs> you know, it, it's crazy. So, like, it adds, like, a, a really great layer to it of the monster. Um, all right. What's your number four, Paul? My number four is also another creature, if you will, that uh, takes different forms, and I want to, it follows. But it counts. It's a movie monsters, not ghosts. It's a monster. It's a monster. It's a ghost. It's a monster. The ghost that looks different every time it, it walks yeah up. it's terrifying people are scary shit. like it's like, it's like it's like you're pitching in the all-star game and you're just waiting to get there tonight because you got all these curveballs <laughs> can't wait to see what three through one is but i decided on the angel from the angels in the Elf. it's, like, it's gonna it's be the invisible there. man it's gonna all be invisible thing. oh my god all right <laughs> number, what's your number four uh, no, uh not number four you're uh yeah number four right uh, yeah. yes. what's your number four sir you threw me well, off with your curveball. <laughs> so my number four is kind of a movie monster, but I picked it more in the fact that it has, you know, ha become to have such meaning of both an oracle, a monster, but also something really cuddly, and that's Mothman. And I think we're going to see Mothman in film a lot more in the near future. E2, Stottlemyre, E2. <laughs> 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 what are you what are you mad about it's a fine good all out <laughs> great choice trevor uh no it's a good choice thank you um you chose a richard gear movie we appreciate it whatever but you didn't Not pick the gerbils but <laughs> oh did we just make a gerbil joke at the same we time just made an actual <laughs> joke at the same time that that synchronicity babe i love it the synergy is is strong in this <laughs> <laughs> like right. his his rectum right now so i'm oh, sorry oh god oh god we should talk about those things so. i saw those south uh, south park episode um <laughs> number three <laughs> on on my list for uh for movie monsters is actually the xenomorph Ooh, it's just an amazing design still in that original movie like i love them in mm -hmm. all of them but like because the xenomorph never really had a bad design except for maybe premiere i'm not really counting um but that first one was just French kiss, chef's kiss, whatever the fuck it's called. French kiss. I'm, I'll make out my tongue. I'll make out my mm -hmm. hand later. And it's all H.R. Geiger. If yeah. they had not uh -oh. happened to run across his work, we would not have Xenomorphs in any way as we know it. I love it. So what's your number yeah. three, Paul? It's going to be the aliens from a, um, a quiet place. Ooh. <sighs> okay. So at least that's over. <laughs> that's, a good one. that's terrifying man i pop too much i make too much noise listen i, I would die so quick dan says blob xenomorph predator gremlins deadites in that order ptk says xenomorph for the win my friend has a dog that looks like a xenomorph in salivates just like like it stay away from that dog <laughs> <laughs> might have rabies <laughs> no just be a crazy it might actually just be a xenomorph <laughs> you don't want to be here <laughs> Uh, all right, what's your number three, Trevor? Ooh, my number three would be zombies. And I pick a generalization like that because we just talked about the Universal Monsters. And at the time period of the Universal Monsters, there weren't many films made about zombies. And what were made by usually Val Luton and Jacques Tenere were B-list movies. This is a monster that in itself just represents everything that is the proletariat proletariat of the monster verse so you can especially if you look at romero but if you also look at fulci uh in his later zombie work you can do anything uh allegorical with a zombie okay. so that's why i have to pick them and i think right. they are the monster for our time where the other ones were for another well i gotta challenge you which zombie there's different kinds which one do you choose it you have to have a favorite in this one hmm i would have to go with the zombies from land of the dead interesting hmm. kind of coming back with a little more okay reasoning i dig it all right i think that's the romero film that uh rings truest to 2024 very sweet i love that all right 
Here we go. It probably took place in 2024. I have to go back and watch. <laughs> <laughs> Number two on my list is The Gill Man. Ooh. We just talked about him. We just talked about why. I love the suit. I love the movie. Uh, everything about the... I wish there was more depth to the character in, in movie lore. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, uh, I would love to see something done well, but there have been... The ones that do exist are gems, and I love the character. So that's why Gilman is number two in my heart. But you, Paul, what's your number two? <laughs> Curveball, no, no, mine is uh, Pennywise. Oh, nice. I'll take it. Tim Curry I'll one? Fine. I know you'll take it. Oh. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and if I if I had to deal with zombies, the ones that freak me out are the ones from 28 Days Later. I'd be mm-hmm. so The rage. Yeah. Yep. I don't have the cardio for that shit. They just run nonstop. I'd be done. <laughs> I'd just stop. I'd stop Dude. smoking cigarette until I could fucking just, ah, I'd be sorry. That guy when he jumps out in the second one, out of, yeah, and he gets out of the house, and they're all chasing him to the boat. Shit! Oh shit! Oh shit! Yeah, I would have just been dead. <laughs> I wouldn't even jumped down off of the roof. I would. I wouldn't have made it out of the window. Like, I think you would have adrenaline. I the will nah. to be alive. I think would surprise. There's no. You. Fu- there's no flight in my fight or flight anymore. Just straight. There's. I the will wall. create the distraction for you. <laughs> so that's sort of my level. Right. But Trevor, go. what is your number two? Okay, so my number two did appear in a movie, but I didn't like the movie. And my number two is Slender Man. And why I say Slender Man, not because I'm a huge Angus Grimm Phantasm fan, which is a connection there, but I picked it because we're talking about a movie that kind of uses this concept. And Slender Man is the first of what is called a creepy pasta. And right now, creepy pastas are taking the place of universal monsters. But also the concept of Slender Man and lore and analog horror is so now. And it is, I think that is a monster that is very significant because without Slender Man, and of course the case connected to Slender Man, Siren Head might not exist. So mm-hmm. I like it. I like that choice. Cool. Not predominantly known for movies either, but I, I, I dig that. A lot. I think they will. Oh, yeah. yeah. Once once yeah. the stink of the movie goes off. And in fact, like, like even the Crooked Man is starting to come back a little bit after mm-hmm. they used him in Conjuring the complete wrong way. Uh, you know, he's going to be in the Hellboy movie. Like, I think that's what it's going to take. It's going to take these. Wait, did you say another Hellboy movie? Yeah, there's another Hellboy movie coming out and he's fighting the Crooked Man. <laughs> 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 it'll be interesting it's, it's a low but i think it's more low budget i'm, I'm sorry i asked i don't even think they're trying to build a franchise off this one i think they just made a hellboy movie and it looks good it looks interesting so i'm excited but it needs sharks <laughs> fair uh good evening what's up joe how you doing buddy thank you for joining us go check out the indie escape network appreciate them for joining in hanging out tonight uh if i could include video games pyramid head instead of blob hmm. you cannot because we'll do that as another list someday <laughs> and then you can hold it for there but our number one and i'm just gonna go ahead and say it and there is 16 reasons why, you know out uh, 16 reasons documented on the scene snobs channel as to why this is my number one movie monster of all time and you can go check it out trevor was there sturdy joined us for all 16 watching 40 films everybody can argue <laughs> that it's only 39 but it is 40 films because there's 1977 Luigi Kazi Italian version. And I'm counting it because I had to go back and watch it three times because it made me sick. But oh, love for Luigi. He's going to cry. Nobody <laughs> gives him any love. My, his color, his colorization of the film was horrible. <laughs> and his cut would make me sick. <laughs> <laughs> um but there are 40 films <laughs> and a lot more if you count tv but uh yes it's godzilla 100 go check out our full retrospective of all 40 films and, and tv shows and everything else so uh i'm not going to say much on it but i love i love that uh beautiful green big green you know son of a gun i love him he's my favorite so how about you paul what's your number one i went with the killer from in a violent nature Ooh, I, I need to see that it was it was really fucking good. Awesome. I so agree. Good. <laughs> what what's wrong? Boring. Was wrong. It was not boring. It was so good. <laughs> I, I haven't even written a review because I've fallen asleep like twice trying to write it. Just really? Like, I can hear crickets. Oh, yeah. there's that weird bird that yeah. whistles in the long run while he's yeah. walking and walking and walk. Yeah. You ever walked it's... in a forest? Same shit. 
He was going to Same Mordor. Shit. That's what was happening. He was just killing his way to Mordor. Uh, <laughs> I don't want to do it. Enough. Rip, it, rip someone's head through their own ass, bro. It, 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 <laughs> a it, marketable it, talent. It's mm. a marketable talent for sure. Right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> There's a niche for that. You get fired every week. <laughs> <laughs> He's got to stop throwing them cur- curveballs at me left and right. <laughs> Coming to a red room near you. <laughs> I love it. So, Trevor, who's your number one? So. Oh, so I, I, they're in movies. I have to say humans. Especially if you look at horror and its progression over the past 30 years, Mm -hmm. you start seeing more and more concept of dystopia, apocalypse, climate change, uh, Godzilla. (laughs) When it comes down to Dr. Frankenstein, it's all about humans. Humans are the most of the monsters i know it's generalized but i had to do it it's hard to argue because even on supernatural a show where week to week they fought supernatural monsters they always said that humans were the things that scared them the most uh because it's true it's, uh, oh yeah you can expect hmm. the killer to be a killer but you can't hmm. expect the human to be human all the time humane yeah. <laughs> so the humans from it follows don't count though huh. okay. they're not okay. human they're, those they're, aren't what, human those the, humans more the Do you think that's kind. a human <laughs> chasing after them? They think it's a human. That's their representation of an STD. <laughs> that's AIDS <laughs> is following them. Is basically what they're saying. That's yeah. it's, you know that's that's so. Sorry, your STD <laughs> humans don't count. Your STD <laughs> ghosts. They're humans. people too. Like, no, uh, I mean it counts. It's your list. <laughs> <laughs> Your STD ghost humans, though, like are the worst. But anyway, we're going to start reviewing. That's right. We're going to review Long Legs and Fly Me to the Moon. Two of us saw both of them. (laughs) No, Trevor's going to join us. We're going to start with uh, Long Legs, and Trevor's going to join us for this one. Um, But yeah, guys, all right. I don't have your ratings. So here's what I'm going to do. Before we talk about it, we want you to give your rundown of it, Trevor, of what you thought of Long Legs. What's your review? Okay. Well, first, I have to say that it lives up to the hype. And so I went to a theater in Hagerstown, Maryland, and I was at a bar there and we uh, with the person I went with, and we started talking to the guy about Long Legs. And I'm getting a very distinct feel that he believes about the story of uh the the actress who played uh oh uh, harker and nicholas cage and her blood pressure and i looked at him and i said dude it's simple william castle on such an extremely base level the first thing i have to say about long legs it's a film all about suggestion And to put out such a lame thing that so many people fell for shows that it is powerful. Um, I'd have to say that if I was in a, if I had to create a sentence about this film, it is Silence of the Lambs through the view of analog horror. Um, I loved it. Uh, There was so much symbolism in the film that it's insane. I could go on hours about it. But uh, a quick story, and this is the thing, a movie like Long Legs is a film about Satan, and it's about devil worship. And I'm at my job today, and one person is asking about movies, and another person says, oh, I saw Long Legs. I'm like, oh, it's really good. And then they spill like a couple sentences, but then they got to, it's about S-A-T-A-N. And I just looked at Satan, and they all looked at me like I was... a a heathen so to me (laughs) it fascinates me what a person who genuinely believes in the devil and in satan would take away from long legs because honestly as a devil film and i unfortunately know a lot about them (laughs) i thought it was very very good and followed a lot of the traditional occultism and satanism that is on books so i I will just say this, Trevor. Yeah. You're 100 percent wrong in your review. Uh, no. <laughs> Fine. You can't be wrong in a review. We we, we can't have that symmetry, uh, synchronicity all the time. 
fair, fair, fair. I, no, I, I listen. Here's <laughs> the thing: like uh, the comparison, and I did a full review, written review of it over on our letterbox, the, the scene sounds mm -hmm. letterbox. So go follow us over there, check it out. Where I really kind of got more in depth with it, which I'm not going to do on here. Um, I can, but I want. I'd rather save that for a non podcast show. But mm -hmm. uh, overall, like I know the comparisons. Of course, I was uh oz perkins who directed it is the son of anthony mm -hmm. perkins there's a lot of parallels to uh not just silence of lambs but like psycho uh and, and films like that and it is it's a very much realist yeah it's a neon uh a production and it's a it's a listen it, it fits the tone of what a neon and a24 mm -hmm. are putting out in terms of horror but it, it just for me it was a movie that just didn't have the same charm or if that's not the right word or, or, or just a gravitas that, you know, a silence lambs did, you know, so, or, 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 or psycho did it's missing the mark of a truly special film. In my opinion, it was, it was a good film. I, I didn't mind the investigation. Uh, I love the atmosphere that was being built in it. Uh, and nothing, only one time did that atmosphere really pay off, in my opinion, mm -hmm. where they were playing the long shots and what could be happening and this, that, and the other. But uh, yeah, for me, it was just one of those things where it's like, you had something that was really special and it was a cool, unique story, but it was just the, the same things that you're hyping up about it are the same things that I think kind of brought it down. <laughs> nick cage nick cage's performance is really good his makeup not so much i, I didn't love a picture the... of where he actually it has well to hold on one no sec trevor question. trevor oh, hold sorry. on one sec please exactly. uh okay. i just want to finish my point in, in my review and and i want to get i want paul to get to his and then we'll, we'll talk about it a little bit after but um so it just it didn't land for me on as mm -hmm. soon as you see it like i'm just like ah, yeah all right i just didn't it, it didn't scare me it wasn't like i could see why it's a creepy figure, but there's a lot of like just stale dullness to it, especially uh, Michael Monroe, who I really enjoyed and watch her and I like that it follows, but I didn't realize and it follows. That's just a personality. She seems to be holding. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's a dry personality and it's, it's, dull, it's dull. You know, she was the most dull character in it. Blair Underwood wasn't in this. It wouldn't, I don't think it would have the same flavor of being carried in an exciting way. Everyone in this, ex with the exception of Nick Cage, uh, was just very dull. I thought Alicia Witt, who I do like in some things, was miscast as the mom. Uh, yeah, it just a lot about it. I was like, you're trying to, I felt like there was forced connections in certain areas, but it just did not land for me. I don't think it's a bad movie. I'm glad I saw it. I do think I need to see it again. I'm always open. And, and when a movie that I think is, is good like this, uh, opens and, and I didn't have a, like a connection with it or, or, you know, I didn't like it or, or however it plays out. I do like to check it out again to see what it's about, mm -hmm. you know, see what, see what I really enjoyed about it. So I will see it again. I might have a different take on it, but overall there's, there were just some things that like, it just didn't, it's not something I think has a lot of rewatchability in my opinion. But uh, I, before we get to that though, I, I do want to ask Paul, what do you think about the movie, man? Like, what did you think going in? <laughs> so originally I had low expectations for this movie. And then from hearing some of our friends <clears throat> and fellow horror watchers uh, speaking so highly of it, I, you know, I, the hype kind of went up because I was like, oh, okay, it's a great movie. And they had made the comparisons to Silence of the Lambs, things like that. I think Trevor did a much better job explaining how it was like Silence of the Lambs because I think mm -hmm. when people told me that it was like Silence of the Lambs, they made it too vague. Mm -hmm. And I think I was too hard on the movie for it, but it just didn't land for me, man. Um, it was just, it was too open. There were too many holes in it for me to where I was just like, so what was the point of, you know, the opening scene? Like, why did we have to see... Or be like, hey, don't go in that house. The killer's there. Let's call for backup. And then dude just, oh, okay, let's go knock and see what's up. Dead. That's it. Does she get him? Does, like, they just don't explain enough. And I was, I, to me, <clears throat> I feel like a lot of times that's almost, I see it as almost a cop out. That they didn't want to do the formal writing that they're trying to say, you know, oh, we left it more open just so that, you know, you have to think about it. Then it's up for the audience. I think that's a cop out and a shortcut for writing poorly, um, which is what I thought once it came around where all of a sudden it was, oh, well, he worships the devil. And this is more of a supernatural thing this whole time. Mm -hmm. And it was just like, OK, so that's how we're going. I love what you're saying. I do love the themes of the movie. I didn't mind that it was Satan. I didn't mind all that. No, no, no. There's a lot of elements to it that they added that just just <laughs> felt unexplained. And I understand that mm -hmm. you're chalking it up to the Satan and the devil, but it just it, it didn't land for me. I got the same feelings about this movie that I did the first time I watched The Sixth Sense. 
And I have the same okay. feelings about that movie where I'm right. like, ah, you know, everybody's talking about this is the greatest thing on the planet. And it's mm-hmm. like, it was good. I'm glad I've seen it. I have never watched The Sixth Sense again after that first time. Right. You know, I so that, that to me, that tells you something. There's a lot of people who are like, I swear by it, but I'm like, I never want to see, I just don't ever want to see it again. Long Legs is a little different. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a stronger film in, in certain areas, especially in its cinematography. Uh, yes. Yes. But it's, I, I do want to rewatch it. I do want to, mm-hmm. you know, capture maybe some of the charm that everybody else is finding. But mm-hmm. now, Trevor, you were talking about the makeup earlier. I would love to hear what you were going to say about that. Oh, well, it, it's, you know, I don't, I wasn't blown away by the by the visuals <clears throat> of Nicolas Cage because basically it's a mixture of a concept kind of like Buffalo Bill, but also uh, a character played by Tiny Tim, who was a ukulele player uh, mm-hmm. in a 1985-87 film by Ohio's Bill Rabin called Blood Harvest. Mm-hmm. And you're like, oh my, okay, okay, how in God's earth could that have potentially nope, I see been? it. I, I see, see it. it. And also, here's the thing, and this is why I love the movie on so many levels, and I just, ooh, it's just, it is a just referenced explosion by Oz Perkins. And there's a lot of times that he even takes the liberty of going and mixing with existing lore of other movies. And I really truly think that I love this movie because I think it's film's first attempt at analog horror. Well, okay. My only argument here is that like when Nicolas Cage is talking about the character of long legs that he plays in the movie, he refers so he says he drew a lot of comparisons to his mother mm-hmm. so you know and 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 i don't know what that means i don't i've never seen his mother i have no idea i'm sure it's not look but i'm sure like just the way she talked or acted or, or however it was it's now a good place for his uh, person when, to be if he's yeah yeah but when i see that i'm like i can see that you know mm-hmm. i see what he's saying i see basing it off of like his mother maybe this is what she was like or, or that mm-hmm. but then that removes me from the fact that alicia witt didn't play it like a mom at all mm-hmm. she just seemed like a roommate that this woman went back to go visit <laughs> like an old roommate this woman <laughs> went to go visit. um yeah there's there's just a lot of stuff that was very just really didn't work for me even at beginning the, the clairvoyance i got it i understood with the orbs and everything else i don't need it explained and i'm not talking to you trevor i'm talking about people in the comments <laughs> uh, i don't need it explained <laughs> I got it. Mm-hmm. I don't hate the movie. I don't say don't see it, but I don't think it lived up to the hype. And I think there was a lot of elements in it that, although could have been cool if they were explained, <laughs> but not fully were. You know, they mm-hmm. were just kind of left to lore, and and that doesn't work for me in a movie. Um, mm-hmm. But if we give uh, our ratings one out of five here, Trevor. What would you give okay. this one out of five? A four and a half. Four and a half. And you, and our man Dan definitely agrees with you. He gives it a four and a half. Of course, Master Shake is over on Betting Bros. And you can check him out on Master Shake's moderately entertaining mixology minutes sometimes. <laughs> Had to pick on him a little bit. But uh, four out of five. Those are the people who liked it. Mm-hmm. Now, again, my <laughs> mine is based on middle of the road. Go oh, check it out. But I gave it a three. Paul, you gave it a two and a half. Do you stand by that two and a half after everything Trevor said? Yeah. I mean, I'll rewatch it. Maybe that rating goes up, but as for right now, yeah, it's still two and a half. I dig it. All right. Well, that's our rating for that. Now we are going to get into the movie. Fly me to the moon. That freaking song. Um, But Trevor, do you want to stick around for this or we want to let you go? Uh, Honestly, I really don't have much to add. I didn't see it, but I want to thank you both. As always, this has been a pleasure. Yeah. Thanks for thank you for coming on, man. And we'll see you next Anytime. week for our first of two mixtape episodes coming up. So thank you, Trevor, for awesome. joining in on that. Thank you both. See ya. Thank you, well, Trevor. All right. Well, guys, we are going to talk about Fly Me to the Moon, the new Channing Tatum and Scarlett Johansson movie that uh at the fifty five five year anniversary of the first launch to the moon with those three great men, Neil Armstrong, Buzz Aldrin, and Michael Collins, uh, and where they walked on the moon. This tells the story, uh, uh, Cape Canaveral, Florida, and uh, I can't remember Channing Tatum's name, and and he's not a real person anyway, but he's like the director of operations or director Uh, of engineering uh, or something, and he was the one that was basically making sure that the the rockets would fly. And then, of course, Scarlett Johansson comes in as this big-time New York ad exec who may be a con artist, and she gets blackmailed by Woody Harrelson's CIA uh, <laughs> person to work for NASA and to get them sponsorship and, and build them up 
So that way they can make the space race what it was. Now I will tell you, I didn't hate this movie. I actually liked it more than Long Legs. And uh, well, no, I didn't like it more than Long Legs. I had more fun with it than Long Legs. It is your garden variety rom com, but with you know a few more little fun blips and stuff like that on there. It's not the way for streaming for it, in my opinion, personally. Uh-huh. But, uh, you know, it, you might want to check it out. It's very dry in a lot of areas, whereas I think Scarlett Johansson and Woody Harrelson kind of carried this whole film. And Jim Rash did a fun job playing the, dire- the director because uh, at one point they do make her, without the, without the rest of NASA knowing, create uh, a moon landing and a soundstage. Again, they say all this is fake. But I have to argue, why would you do that <laughs> 55 year anniversary of the <laughs> first launch like why would you do this the first time we put a man <laughs> on the moon you have people who not only think it was faked but also believe that the world is flat uh-huh. and you make this movie uh-huh. either you make this movie because it's like the ufo thing where like oh my god COVID exists and then like everybody ufos exist you know try and like divert us either you make this movie to try and make us like <laughs> cushion the blow to the fact that you did film it um or you are just asinine and and throwing kerosene on the fire not even gasoline kerosene on the fire I mean that old shit too from victorian era <laughs> it's not diluted and you know, it just is gonna go up in flame you're even throwing whale blubber in it it's over <laughs> You've just exploded it all. <laughs> Why would you do this? Why would you make this movie and think it's a fun tongue in cheek? The actual story was good. You could have actually, I think this movie would have benefited from not making it in the soundstage and only making it her trying to be a great PR person for NASA and him trying to get him to fly. And then at the end, they come together in love. I, I would have, I would have preferred that. It's, and it's not that you can't do a movie about him, you know, a fake moon landing it's not that you can't but you're sa- but it's a cop out <laughs> it's a cop out because and i'm sorry i know i'm passionate about this because it's not like you're you're making a movie about the moon landing being fake right you're making a movie saying it happened everything happened the way it, you know it did but we also did this too and we thought it'd be fun to share it and it's a wrapped around a cool love story it's out it just doesn't work and yet i still was the movie i probably <laughs> past weekend um it's killing me and i sorry i'm putting this up late but if you're watching you've seen spoiler warnings so good luck uh (laughs) paul i have spoken enough (laughs) what do you think of this movie um like well i guess unlike you i did like this more than long lengths Uh, absolutely i do still think this is one you should stream at home um i don't think you need to go i don't think seeing it on a movie screen is going to make that much of a difference nope i thought it was enjoyable i you know, we're not going to get in all my conspiracies or whatnot. So when they did the whole fake Moonlight, you know, they filmed it. <clears throat> I was like, uh-huh, uh-huh. Make sure you join in for our uh, conspiracy <laughs> theory episode coming up soon. So God, it's going to be such a mess. Um, that's our that's so every year since for the mm-hmm. past two or three years we do a true crime episode i think this year is going to be a conspiracy true crime episode it's, it's going to be, be an interesting one mick you're going to be like what the fuck paul i think i throw no, curveballs not, with movies you got a dark mind no nah. Uh, again see- go down below to the bottom of the description <laughs> and look for that mental health resources that i put there on every episode <laughs> but um anyway i i did enjoy it you know it's one i, I i'm looking forward to seeing with the parents just see what they thought because you know they were kids when the moon landing happened so they watched it on tv in school so you know it means more to them so i think having a fictionally based movie about it i think they'd find very entertaining I think they'd absolutely love this movie. So I think if you want a good family movie or one, you could take the parents or grandparents to, I think this one is perfectly acceptable because I kind of appreciated that they didn't make it the whole movie about them just faking, faking the moon landing. Um, Cause I feel like they would have lost a lot of their audience. Cause then people that historically saw them landing on the moon and all that are not going to see it and be outraged that, you know, why would you do this? Blah, 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 blah. Um, so I think they did it right. Um, and I love both of Channing Tatum and Scarlett Johansson's acting. So I did this movie. I get it. This movie was to appease the boomers. Yeah. That's what this movie was. It was to appease the boomers. Yeah. You got good looking 60s style. You got the most hopeful time in American history 55 years ago. Uh, and we went to the fucking moon. I know I'm trying not to curse, but that's an amazing (laughs) achievement. And like the boomers are walking in there and they're going to be like, 
well, they better not take this away from us. It better not be fake. Mm-hmm. Better not. And then it's like, oh, it's not fake. It was just, she faked it, but I get why she faked it. So right. when the real news comes out after the boomers are gone, <laughs> it's already there, man. Like we I'm didn't. Kidding. I'm, anyway. kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I don't want to piss off any of the actual like scientists. <laughs> you can. I don't want to. Uh, but our ratings for this were uh, I. We actually were inverted from the last one. I was two and a mm-hmm. half, and you were three on it. Like I said, it was streaming. Check it out. It's fun. Run in the mill. Uh, movie, but you know, whatever. Uh, we went long today. Holy crap, it's almost 8 30. <laughs> All right, let's, let's move on and uh, finish this off uh, with a mixed movie pick from 1985. And uh, because <laughs> it's celebrating its 39th anniversary and it's my favorite movie of all time, I went with Back to the Future. Go watch it. That's my mixed movie pick. I can't wait for you guys to go see it. If you haven't seen it already, tell me you think and the only way you can do that is by joining our discord and the only way you can do that is by following us over on patreon that's right you know follow us over there and that way you'll get our newsletter you will get written reviews that i do you will get other videos that we put out links things like that and we do other stuff as well and we give out you know merch to our uh merch store uh snobsmerch.com we give out discount codes and so much more we have some i you know our awesome new logos on there and we got tons of other stuff and some very cool movie designs. So uh, I'm very proud of them. So, but you got to be in a no, you got to join up on our Patreon. So follow for free over on Patreon. If you do feel like uh, maybe, you know, parting with some of your money and supporting the channel and all goes back in and helps to build these shows out to be the best they can be. If you like some of our shows and want them to be a little bit longer, well, that takes a little bit of money. <laughs> <'Cause> they, <laughs> you know, some other uh, things that I got to do. Um, but if you guys are interested into it, we got a lot of fun stuff coming, but join up on the Patreon, and we have shows that are for the per- in the perks of the paid Patreon tiers like warp factor fiction. You get early. That's a Star Trek rewatch episode I do with my kid. Uh, we have other shows uh, that are coming out as well, and we're going to be doing special live events over on Patreon. So we can't wait to have you be there. Thank you guys so much for joining in and hanging out with us. Thank you to our sponsor, StubHub. We appreciate you. Go down below in the links. Check out StubHub. Get your tickets for that concert. Get your tickets for that uh, whatever you want to go to, a sporting event, anything else. They got everything on there. I use StubHub. We got our Taylor Swift tickets on there. I've always bought all my tickets on StubHub. They're usually cheaper, and I like them. But, guys, that is what is awesome about this sponsor, so go check them out. And thank all of you. But before we get there, I do want to say, Paul, you got anything to say before we go? <laughs> uh, it's still hot, so stay hydrated, y'all. Uh, <laughs> keep watching. Keep listening. Keep loving the magic of movies, even if you get movies like Long Legs. Oh, that was a little harsh. <laughs> That's kidding. okay. That's okay. But guys, <laughs> thank you again for joining in. Thank you, Paul. Thank you to our guest, Trevor from Ambassador Media. Go follow him. Uh, and thank everybody for just being a part of this nomination and really joining in and hanging out with us. Until next time, I'm Mick Manhattan from the Scene Snobs, and we hope you would just have an amazing time being a part of this nomination. Remember to be kind to each other, stay classy, and take care of yourselves because that's important. Until next time, bye. Bye.